G'day guys, welcome back to Corsair Helicopter Flight Training. Uh, today we're going to look at the engine RPM governing system that we have fitted to our R22 and R44 uh, helicopters. So the RPM governor assists the pilot in maintaining our engine RPM at or around 104% uh, in our R22. So we'll come forward now and have a look at some of the vital components to our engine governing system. So in the cockpit here, I uh, just wanted to point out the taco in the top right hand side of our cockpit. Now you'll see two readouts on this, uh, on this gauge. We've got rotor RPM on the right and engine RPM on the left. Now as pilots, uh, it's imperative that we maintain our rotor RPM in the green at all stages during flight. Now we can manage that by manipulating our engine RPM to maintain our rotor RPM in the green. Luckily for us, uh, the governor takes over that workload above 80%. So the active governing range uh, for our governor is 80 to 115%. Now we can turn the governor on and off by the switch on the front side of our collective here. So if I turn the governor off now, we can see we get a governor off light. Now this removes the power to our governor controller and makes the governor inactive. If we want the governor to come back online, I bring the toggle switch back over towards the pilot and command side. A governor light goes off and the governor is now actively governing our engine RPM at or around 104%. So the other main components we have uh, on the aircraft here for our governing system is our governor motor. Now this is connected uh, directly to our collective control arm. We have a governor controller uh, which is located behind the left hand seat back and it's also important to mention where the signal comes from and that's from our right hand magneto. So here on the workbench we've got a couple of the components we uh, just discussed in the cockpit. So this is our governor uh, controller. So this is located on the back left hand seat back like we just discussed. Just hard mounted there with a couple of screws. Now this will read a signal off our right hand magneto and sense changes in our engine RPM. And it's the governor controller's job to send a corrective input to our governor motor. So having a closer look at our governor motor now, we've got the governor motor assembly here. Now this is a worm drive assembly. Uh, the other important piece to have a look at is our friction clutch uh, just here. So we had a look just before as we manually manipulate uh, the throttle. The friction clutch uh, it allows us to manually override the governor. Now as the governor becomes active above 80% and gets a signal from the uh, governor controller, sends an electrical signal, you'll notice the centre bolt now moving and making a control input to our throttle. Now if we come back out and have a look at the end of our collective, as the governor motor is powered, we can see it manually changes the throttle that's in our hand as well. We're inside our helicopter now. We're sitting on ground here at about 75%. Now you'll notice our governor off light is illuminated to indicate that the governor is not active. Now we said back out in the hangar that our active governing range between 80 and 115%. Okay, so as I roll the throttle up to 80% with the governor on, it would normally take over. Here in the in the manual mode with the governor off, it's our responsibility as pilots to manually manipulate our throttle up to that 100%. And I can do that by gently squeezing our throttle on. So it should be a skill as a commercial pilot to be able to manually manipulate the throttle and maintain it in that green zone to keep our rotor RPM in the green. Now I'm manipulating that at around 102%, 104% there. Now if I gently roll the throttle off, back down below our non-governed range of 80%. I'm gonna demonstrate the effectiveness of the governor now. So below 80% out of that active governing range, I'm now going to turn the governor on, utilizing my governor selector switch on the end of my collective there. Now as I squeeze the throttle back up to 80%, the electronic governor will take over. So that's now sensed. The electronic governor is now taken over and it'll maintain our rotor RPM at 104%. Now there's a 3% wide dead band up at 104% if the RPM uh, is stable, 1.5% either side of that 104%, the governor control will make no corrective input to our engine RPM. So now we're finished with our flight, I'll gently roll the throttle off back below that governed range of 80%, and the governor will no longer take the aircraft back up to 104% uncommanded. Well guys, that wraps up the RPM uh, governor for the R22 helicopter. 
Thanks again for tuning in. If there's anything else you would like to see from the team here at Corsair Helicopter Flight Training, uh, drop a comment in the section below or send us a message. See you next week.